This video is brought to you by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. <laughs> Hey man, it's Javi, and we're doing a triple Godzilla review. The SH Monster Arts Mecha Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Kong. Spoilers for Godzilla vs. Kong, by the way. The SH Monster Arts Gigan from Godzilla Final Wars. And the SH Monster Arts Godzilla Ultima from Singular Point. But before we get into these boxes, let's get into these boxes. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Tokyo Treat is a monthly Japanese subscription box full of the latest exclusive and seasonal Japanese candy and snacks, like Japan-exclusive Kit Kat, ramen, a bunch of popular stuff, and Sakura Ko is also a monthly Japanese subscription box, but with a focus on authentic traditional Japanese snacks from Japan's local artisan snack makers, plus one special Japanese tableware every month. Both are delivered straight from Japan to your door, and both boxes have a different theme every month. These are the June boxes. You didn't hear that wrong, no need to clean out your ears. You get June's theme if you order in May, July's theme in June, you get it by now. June's theme for Tokyo Treat is Snack in Shibuya, piled with exclusive pop culture snacks found from all around downtown Tokyo, possibly depicted on my shirt, which includes this Quattro Cheese Snack, which guarantees that it'll be addicting. Well, we'll see about that. Oh, wow, wow. Damn good. Looks like Cheetos if it didn't taste like hate. And Sakura Ko's theme for June is Taste of Hokkaido. Filled with fresh and authentic Hokkaido tea and delights. Apparently, Hokkaido is known for their corn and dairy. So this sweet corn chocolate should be interesting. Oh, God. Damn, that's good. It's like corn-flavored Rice Krispies smothered in white chocolate. And I know not everyone's into white chocolate, but you're wrong. And if you wanted to know more about the snacks you're getting, there's a booklet explaining every snack included in both boxes, which also has a lot of information on Japanese culture. That's how I knew about the Hokkaido corn thing. Caramel popcorn soda? What in the goddamn fuck? <laughs> ah, damn! She good! So check out the links in the description and use code JOBBY to get $5 off your first Tokyo Treat order and $5 off your first Sakura Co. box. Same code for both links. And check the description for time code so you can watch these reviews in any order you want. But we are going to start with the Mecha Godzilla. Of course, this mechanical kaiju comes from the movie Godzilla vs. Kong, which I did watch. Twice. And I gotta say, right out of the box, the painting and the sculpting on this figure is amazing, but it's not my favorite Mecha Godzilla design. That would go to Kiryu. However, a good design in itself, I just wish there was more similarity between Mecha Godzilla and the standard legendary Goji. One of my favorite Godzilla designs, actually. I think his arms are too long, his limbs too spindly, and the head design not vicious enough. And again, comparing it to the standard legendary Goji, this looks like the good guy in comparison. That might have been the point, actually. I think what he's missing is some teeth. Just looks like grandma lost her dentures. Oh, shitty boy, I think I must have lost my teeth in your ass. The painting and sculpting is fantastic here, though. Love those bright red metallic eyes, which is the only instance of noticeable bright red metallic. I don't count the tips of the spines because they are tiny as hell. Easy to miss on first glance. And I point this out because in the film, one of Mechagodzilla's main characteristics is the pulsing red energy throughout the body. As brilliant as all the mechanical detail is on this figure, it's really missing some color accents. But with the existence of Blue Raspberry Godzilla, I assume they're saving that for a special color version. And on a side note, don't expect another alien review. Gotta be my biggest complaint about this guy and the SH Monster Arts line as a whole, actually. What you get versus what you're paying for. Links in the description, by the way, if you want one for yourself. God bless your wallet. I mean, this guy barely comes with any accessories. Just a pair of alternate hands that don't even look significantly different. Pop this off, pop this in, whoop de doo Or you can remove the claws and mix and match them. whoop de doo This is the closest I can get him playing the circle game. And yeah, that's it. No atomic breath part. I think it's fair to say that any character that can shoot beams out of his mouth should come with that beam. Especially at that price! So nice I bought it twice. Don't ask me about how that happened.
I gotta wonder how Bandai is justifying this price. I mean, again, it looks fantastic. And it even features some neat gimmicks, like some flip-up missiles. I recommend a part separator, but it's not included. That's on both of the shoulders, by the way. And some fold-out missiles on the belly. Which is, by my estimation, barely noticeable. Tiny as hell, too. That's still not enough to justify the insane price tag. I mean, if you're gonna charge premium, go for broke. Mechagodzilla in the movie had way more bells and whistles than this. How about individually moving spines? A spinning drill tail? Seriously, you can't even swivel this thing. And most importantly, more torso articulation. One of the reasons why I rewatched the movie is to confirm that he actually had a lot of upper body articulation. And when the whole point of SH Monster Arts is to give you articulated figures of your favorite kaiju, I don't see why they missed out on that. Just to clarify, there is zero mid-body articulation. However, the plus side to the torso being a solid brick is that the figure overall feels like a solid brick. Still not over $160 worth, but it definitely is one of the best feeling SH Monster Arts figures I've played with. The die cast metal parts in some areas definitely helps with that. Quite hefty too. But before you get the wrong idea about his articulation, why don't we just get into it? Ball joint at the head, the mouth can open. Ball joint at this part of the neck and also at the base. All of that allows it to look up that far and look down that far. Decent side to side as well. Every ball joint can be a swivel. I assume this whole part is on a ball joint. Kind of loose actually. Hinge joint at the shoulder pad. And that makes room for a full rotation at the shoulder. Arm moves out. No bicep swivel. Elbow swivel to make up for that. Bend at the elbow. Whew, that's tight. Ball joint at the wrist. Every ball joint. Nothing here. Rotation at the leg. And that is about as far as you can kick up and can't move back at all. Unless we deal with his crotch pipes, colloquially known as the pussy bones. Now I've heard horror stories about these parts here and having this in person, I completely understand it. Cool feature in theory, you can see as I move the leg out, the pistons shift accordingly, but it limits the articulation severely and is potentially extremely delicate. The included instructions seemingly encourage you to disconnect the pipes from the holes. Carefully! Do not to misplace it! Thanks a lot. Let's try it. So if we were to do that, uh, you can see that's actually on a ball joint. Jesus Christ, that is tiny. And, oh shit. Ugh. Uh. Nothing seems to have irreparably broke, but the ball joint can be- Oh! Oh, oh wait, that was actually pretty easy. Now with those disconnected, you can get a slightly higher kick and it still can't move back at all. I look like a fool more than usual. Hinge joint, hinge joint. But I suppose disconnecting is kind of worth it because you get a thigh swivel, which of course is very limited by the pussy pipes. Ah, sh oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, oh, oh my pussy pipes. Oh, please. Sweetie, I seem to misplace my pussy pipes. <laughs> Just don't drop it, for the love of God. Silo. Bend at the knee, also really tight, and also features some piston pumping action. Yeah. This shin panel, no relation, moves up, and this panel at the back of the ankle moves up. Allows the ankle proper to move up and down, and you get a decent ankle pivot. And how could I forget the best part of any SH Monster Arts Kaiju with the tail? The tail articulation is bananas. Ball joint, 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 ball I'll save it. Transform Element OP Leader. My previous review, the Toys Alliance Archcore Frostlight. And SH Monster Arts Godzilla and Kong. My favorite part of the movie was when Mecha Godzilla got spit roasted. Sweetie, no! <laughs> Great figure, looks good, feels good, just not as poseable, and weirdly enough, not as colorful as I'd like it to be. Lack of accessories I can deal with if it wasn't for that price.
Get it if you're a completionist, or just wait for the inevitable special color version. Fuck off, Bandai. And thank you, Bandai, for giving attention to one of the best Godzilla movies ever. The SH Monster Arts Giga! is actually a re-release of an older figure, as far as I can tell. And there's really not much of a difference between the sculpts. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it, because the painting on the sculpting on this figure is amazing. I understand some of you hardcore Gigan fans, all two of you, are not super into this spiky, edgy redesign. But I gotta disagree. This ancient cyborg chicken is hot. Damn, he's sick. And I can't talk about the figure without talking about the movie design because they are identical. This figure does an excellent job at pretty much 100% recreating his look from the film. And what a film it is. I don't want to get too sidetracked here, but Godzilla Final Wars. I never not thought about watching it. I actually watched it. Fantastic movie in a bit of an ironic way. <laughs> It's not the best movie objectively, but it's the best movie deep down in my soul. And the look of this guy strikes deep into my soul. If I had to describe this figure in two words, it would have to be... Ah! This guy absolutely hurts to handle, but I wouldn't want it any other way. And thankfully, all the joints are really solid. Except for his right leg for some reason. Not that it completely refuses to stay plugged in, it just comes off a little too easily. Might be able to fix that with some super glue, but I'm not inclined to heavily modify a premium product. Uh, At least this guy feels a little more justified. Seeing as you get a good amount of stuff on the sides of his hook hands, you can remove them and replace them with these. <laughs> People think this is funny, right? Even got clipped by the out of context Javi the Hong Twitter account. Plug that in onto both sides, of course. And you get another pair of shooty claws that you could plug into his other hand. And that's supposed to look like he shot out those claws. They're even poseable to a certain degree. Gotta love those bendy wires. These beads are also movable, so you could reposition them to get a look that's somewhat closer to the movie. But unless you have some kind of stand, either Bandai Tamaki Nations or otherwise, it just looks fucking disgusting. And did they have to be so freaking long? <laughs> like, we get it, he shot his goo! whoop de doo Guess it makes it easier to wrap around a Godzilla face. I don't have the Final Wars Godzilla yet, but make no mistake, I will review it as soon as I get it. Or around the time Monster X comes out. Shit. And of course, you can recreate the scene where Gigan is pulling Godzilla in for a kiss, which Godzilla fully delivers. I'm gonna coom. The head on the figure is also removable, not just as a neat reference, but you actually get a few parts to replicate his upgraded form. You gotta remove the neck from the base, which is easier said than done, especially because of all the ah shits. Probably be easier if you heated it up, but unfortunately, I don't have atomic breath. Ugh. There we are. And replace that with this armored neck. Ugh. Remove this neck cover and replace the head, of course. Take out the side pincers, plug in these new ones, replace the horn, and of course, replace the hands. Yes, I will count that as a transformation, fuck off. And the upgraded Gigan looks just as good as the normal one. His new chainsaw hands feature rotating blades that don't always want to rotate. And don't worry about ah shitting yourself. The blades are a flexible rubber material. If you really wanted to see them spin, all you gotta do is grab a few of these blades and slightly pull on it. Uh, uh, yippee. Undeniably fun to look at, but I wish there was some kind of button that you could push that would automatically make them rotate. I guess that's just too much to ask, isn't it? And finally, you get a laser effect part, which is highly appreciated if this was the only accessory that this guy came with. I wouldn't be that mad. So it makes total sense that this is a re-release of an old figure. Modern SH Monster Arts are the ones skimping on the accessories. But it doesn't actually attach to his face. So you get an included stand, plug that ball joint into this Ah, hole. Posable, of course. Swivel. And now that laser can stay in place. Careful with these sperm cells at the end. They could be delicate. The included instructions mention that. They also mention that his back fin can move down. Nice. But weirdly enough, they don't mention his chest saw. Missed opportunity to make these rotate as well. Ah, I'm sure they could have worked some internal mechanism out. It's not like the 
posability is amazing or anything. Ball joint at the head, ball joint on this segment of the neck, and of course at the base, same amount of posability for the normal neck. You could even see that each ball joint is a dumbbell joint. You can look up that far and look down that far, some side to side. This shoulder pad does not want to stay put. Every ball joint can be. Mouth can open, but can't really close. It's like Willem Dafoe <laughs> and Wild at Heart. Leave a like if you're a fan of true cinema, like the works of David Lynch and Godzilla Final Wars. Ball joint at the shoulder pad, which you saw earlier, can snap off pretty easily. Plugs right back in. Ball joint at the shoulder, which allows for a full rotation. Bicep swivel, arm moves out. A ball joint, ball joint, ball joint allows for a bend at the elbow. And nothing for the wrist because there are no wrists. What are you, stupid? And like I implied, the torso articulation is very limited. You could flip up this chest saw, and that kind of unlocks this sort of ball joint at the chest. But when you pose the chest it's barely noticeable kind of side to side but doesn't really stay there so this whole area is functionally non-articulated ball joint at the hips and if you remove the leg you can see that they can shift up and down but as you can imagine not really noticeable fully assembled a full rota rotation at the leg thigh swivel a decent mm, barely there spread bend at the knee it's all ball joints by the way ball joint at the calf insert calf swivel joke here ball joint at the the ankle allows it to move up down all around and a ball joint at the toe strangely enough the toe feels cold by the way a dang good pivot and on the back side up and down at that back fin and the wing fins can spread which is helpful if you want to replicate his flying poses get yourself a stand not included and of course a beautiful sh monster arts tail ball joint ball joint blah, 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 blah. you get the point Ah, be careful with these tail spikes though, they tend to clash together when you're posing the tail, just don't want any of them to snap off. Gotta love that subtle shading on the armor too, which is really something this figure has over Mechagodzilla. The paint job is so much deeper, featuring a good amount of shading, weathering, accents where it's needed, not to mention a beautiful use of clear parts, and the posability is slightly better than Mechagodzilla, but not nearly as fun to handle. And for some reason, his size doesn't bother me too much. Here's Monica Prime. Godzilla from 2002, which is the closest approximation to the Final Wars one that I have, and the Mecha Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Kong. Take a drink every time I say Godzilla if you want to die. I like this guy, and with the variety of display options you get, the price doesn't seem that bad. But still significant. But before I decide which one I like better, we've got one more figure to cover. The SH Monster Arts Godzilla Ultima from Singular Point is a new favorite Godzilla design. Although I'd still put it below Shin, I'm really glad to have this figure. No thanks to the show. Not to get too deep into it because I never want to think about it again, but I just want to make a singular point. The show sucks. Visually stunning. Everything looks good, including the human character designs, but the plot is as incomprehensible as Jabi the Hong Lord. Doesn't help that it was written by a real physicist. So unless you have a PhD in bullshit, you won't understand the show. Why'd they hire this guy to write Godzilla? <laughs> anyway, the painting and the sculpting on this figure is amazing. Perfectly captures his design from the show, down to a more painterly style of weathering. Since this isn't meant to mimic a live action costume or photorealistic CGI, Although I would have liked a little more highlights on the skin, it looks great regardless. And I love the proportions on this guy. Oh! One of my favorite parts of the show was saying, Big bitch every time Godzilla was on screen. This is why I usually don't watch stuff, I go crazy. And of course, his most notable feature are his thunderous thighs. His long ass tail! You could say that it's a little too long, but I really don't mind it, I actually quite like it. It helps that all the ball joints are nice and solid. So if you want to pose the tail to get everything in frame, it will hold its position. And that also allows for a variety of nice curvaceous tail poses. But let's not forget about the spines, they look great. The veins full of red dust are painted precisely, more precisely than how red dust was explained in the show. Seriously, that show was a major example of over-explaining something to the point where nothing makes sense anymore. 
It's only okay when Evangelion does it. And of course, the spines lead up into the beautiful head sculpt. I don't understand why so many people were giving this design grief. Looks great from all angles, except for the dead front. But that's nothing new for Godzilla. Who cares? Excellent mouth detail too. Disgustingly rendered. And as you can see, he can open his mouth really wide. But if you wanted to go wider, Courtney, you can remove his head and replace it with this wide mouth head, which looks amazing, but it's unarticulated and there's a part of me that feels they should have just engineered the normal head to have a wider opening mouth. I mean, Shin Godzilla did it. Go check out that video if you want to know the true meaning of incomprehensible lore. If I die in this world, who will know something of me? It's more comprehensible than singular point. You know what would have made this accessory more impressive? A god damn effect part. I don't understand why Bandai is so opposed to giving you breath effect parts nowadays. It's not like replicating the ring effect from the show is impossible. Just a little more extra effort to justify the cost. Links in the description once again. At least it's slightly cheaper than the other two. I would make a kidney joke here, but uh, what kidneys? You just have to make do with the breath effect part you already have. But you do actually get more accessories. A nicely sculpted but unpainted pair of jet jaguars. Which was definitely my favorite story element of Singular Point. If the show revolved around Otaki Factory and Jet Jaguar, it would have been significantly better. Remove the cute anime girl and her pseudoscience. More stuff about giant robots and what it means to face a cataclysmic catastrophe. And less about red. Dust, transtemporal diagrams, the future becomes the past, but it's also the future archetype, orthogonal diagonalizer. Singular point. More like midpoint. These guys can't stand up on their own, which is why you get a pair of platforms, slides right into his heel, and it works pretty good. Same thing with the other one. I'm sure someone more talented than me can go ahead and paint those, but damn, they're small. I'd rather wait for the SH Monster Arts figure. Not poseable at all, unlike Godzilla himself. Ball joint at the head, a hinge joint, hinge joint, no tongue. Ball joint at the base of the neck, can't look up that far and look down that far. Some side to side, every ball joint. Ball joint at the shoulder, can't quite get a full rotation, but you could try for one. I okay, never mind. The arm can move back that far without forcing it, of course. Arm moves out, ball joint at the bicep, which can be a swivel. Ball joint at the elbow, which of course can bend. Ball joint at the wrist, over here. And the first figure of the day to actually have torso articulation, which is a ball joint at the chest and a ball joint at the waist. Every ball joint, but the spines get in the way of that, no problem. Allows for some side to side. The whole body can move up that far, and you get a barely noticeable crunch. Ball joint at the th Thunder thighs, they look more delicious the more I look at them. Ah! A high kick can't move back that far. A beautiful spread. I think it's just the ball joint here, but you could fake a thigh swivel. Bend at the knee, ball joint at the calf, every ball joint out, and a ball joint at the foot. Amazing pivot. As for the tail, you already know. Oh! Ah, to touch the back of my throat. And it should be pretty obvious that this guy is pretty damn big. Here's Madoka, Gau, Prime, Gaian, Mecha Godzilla, and his closest thematic relative, the SH Monster Arts Shin Godzilla. If I die in this world, I will be ripped off shamelessly. <laughs> Posability is great. It looks fantastic. I think this might be my favorite figure of the day. And I'm not just saying that because it's the cheapest. Although Mecha Godzilla still gets bonus points for how solid he is. This guy's really solid as well, forgot to mention that. And I forgot to mention, no toy review next week. Use hashtag JobbyFailbox on Twitter and Instagram for a chance to be featured in next week's Failbox stream. Attach a letter, questions, comments, fan art. That hashtag is my new P.O. Box. Send me Godzilla thigh pics. I love you, baby. I took a whole work day to watch this goddamn show. I hope you're freaking grateful. Orthogonal diagonalizer! Orthogonal diagonalizer! What a catchy name.